welcome again to my YouTube channel. In my studio this evening, decided to do an evening painting. Um, went for a walk locally, around the local fields, um, Parklands Farm, Galleywood, and um, came across this lovely old, lovely old oak tree. So I thought I'd um, try and put that down onto watercolour paper. The composition is um, pretty good, got a gate and fence to the right, um, that is, um, gate is closed so that doesn't attract your eye out of picture, lovely little track leading into the distance, lovely large tree to the right, a um, little bit of smaller tree work and hedging to the left and uh, a little bit of shadow work in the foreground so it uh, should be quite an easy um, picture to, um, to complete. Okay well I've put down a little bit of check that's in focus there you go I've put down just a small amount of drawing not a great deal as you can see tree um, little track uh, one or two indications of where trees are going to come and the fencing so let's see if I can get my paints tidied up and um, we'll paint this hopefully relatively quickly. Okay well I'm just back from a uh, session of outside painting so um, everything's all a little bit muddied so I'll just use a flat brush like that and just tidy all the paints up, uh, loosen them up, plenty of water all helps to give that nice um, fresh feel to your paintings when you use your colours again and it just lightens everything up I mean I do like working from paint that's a little bit on the hard side don't want it too for me not too um, too flexible straight from the tube sometimes you tend to waste a lot of paint you pick up a lot of paint that you don't really need um, but um, other artists will tell you totally different so that's um, anyway those all nicely freshened up. Well, I've come in fairly close because I want to show you um, exactly what um, what I'm doing here. And um, okay, well, I'm going to put in some very um, loose sort of washes. Um, let's use a large squirrel mop. A um, bit of water. Um, just damp the paper so you can see it's got a bit of colour to it purely because um, I've been freshening my colours up so it just takes away from the white paper really um, painting down as far as the distance that's the distance area there and um, <clears throat> going to have light coming in from the right <clears throat> so we're going to indicate a bit of light with a red the alizarin coming in that side um, then we're going through to uh, a bit of lemon yellow just introduce that like that and there is some blue just add a little bit more of this red into the distance area I'd like to have a nice bit of red in that distance as I say there is some blue um, I'm going to use ultramarine, may granulate a little, but never mind. Got a bit of red there as well, look at that. That's amazing. Amazing what you pick up on your brush when you just playing around with paint. Let's just go a little bit blue in that top right hand corner. Here we are. Now, all we need to do, see where that water is hanging there, waiting for me to do something with it. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to paint in um, <clears throat> a little bit of the um, of the greenery. Well, it's not going to be green. It's going to be lemon yellow initially. Leaving just a little bit there. So a little bit of lemon yellow. And also a little bit of that nice lemon yellow for the sky, for the um, where that tree will, will, will appear. Oh, you know, it's nice to... to bang in a bit of colour at this stage 
Um, there we are, and that's all running very, very nicely. Little touches where that um, other fresh tree will be. And to be fair, if you paint like this, you're pretty much getting the um, the worst of the, you know, laying colour on in a fairly, fairly informal way. And that, um, I'm using raw sienna now, uh, with a little bit of that cadmium, of course. And, uh, you know, you're setting the scene, really. Uh, a little bit of tapering there, but it's not too much. And that is all you need, really need to do. I'm going to leave the track unpainted at this stage. So what are we looking at? Just a few, few minutes laying colour on and allowing it to completely dry. Well, it's pretty much uh, dry. Um, could do with another moment or two, but uh, we've been impatient this evening, so I'm um, going to try and bash on and do just a little bit more to it in the distance, really. Um, <clears throat> Don't know why I'm so impatient, but there you go. Um, <clears throat> right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to dampen area there and an area there. The reason I'm damping that is that I'm going to paint up into that with cerulean blue and raw sienna. This will give me a blue green in actual fact it to be a little bit more yellowy blue really and all you do you touch into it and then all of a sudden same along there that's the edge of the field so it runs away like that and that creates a soft feel Go across there as well and that is the field in the distance then all you do a bit more blue just to give it a bit of feeling of depth see the way I'm rubbing that brush over there to give it a lovely distant feel a little tint of blue on the top will give it a lovely feel to the um, distance there good there you go so all you need to do for the distance area. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to work, um, work forward now. And um, let's have a little bit of dark green. And for this I'm going to use ultramarine with cadmium yellow. Nice mix that for more middle distance, distant greens wouldn't say that it's my favourite for foreground greens. Um, I prefer something a little bit more powerful than that. Um, but for distant greens, and there's a lovely dark little distant green there. And it's soft and yet hard in places. There's a hard edge just there where that light is. And then it comes around and there's a tree there. And that tree is actually a little lighter, so I'm painting around the lower part of that tree. And it's quite dark up there. Okay, yeah, that, that's pretty good. That's coming along. And then we just spread that in to create a soft feel to that. Now, the other side, we're going to put in almost yellow green. Because this is where... The sun is catching and the difference between this greeny yellow and the distance will give us that feeling of depth there we go that's it we can have a nice bit of sunlight coming through there a little bit of that base of that there we go now with this green I'm continuing with an area here. These are the just more broken areas of greenery. Cadmium yellow. 
bang these on nice and quick. I'm looking for a nice summer green. There we are. Openness to the tops of those trees. A little bit more solid in the lower area, but then just a little darker here and there. And a little darker now. Prussian blue goes in with cadmium. This gives me a more local green. Like that. Add a bit more cadmium to start with. Don't want to be too dark too early. And all you do is just drag across the paper. This is more of a foreground of a green. And you will see the difference between one green and the other, really. And all of a sudden, you're getting that lovely film of tree work. Leaving enough gaps. You know, we don't want to be too open with this. Because if you are, then... Um, can cause a problem. Nice to have a few gaps. I like that lovely soft edge, lovely bit of depth there. Uh, now I'm adding a bit of burnt sienna to that because that will make it considerably darker. Don't want to close that up too much. We do a texture to go on there later. Um, and uh, oh, and a little bit of burnt sienna in the lower area there I've spotted. So just lift that up. That's it. Now a bit of darker green. And once you get this in, now we start looking at a little bit more of the detailed work where you've got the odd little branch overhanging. It's all got to be depicted in its rightful way. A uh, bit of burnt sienna. Quite dark there. But then it opens up considerably down that back edge. I don't want to create an, too much of an opening there, but this tree is not particularly solid. You know, not completely solid. Um, a bit of bushy area there. And that over, overlaps into there. Good. That's pretty much as I saw it really or as we can see it. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to use Burnt Sienna Prussian Blue. Fairly dark. In fact it is quite dark. And I'm going to create some grasses here and there. Leaving some areas unpainted. There we go. And just a rough edge where there's some grasses there. There we are. We've got a lovely bit of sunlight streaking through the grasses at that point. And then in the foreground, I'm actually going to use cadmium lemon with Prussian. Not too much Prussian. And uh, just put a the bush there that's got quite a bit of sunlight onto it. So we'll stroke that in and we'll attend to that later on. All depends on how everything else goes as to how we um, paint that particular area. So it's all coming along very, very nicely. Right, now I'm going to attend to the large tree. I'm not going to put any trunk work into this area. Attend to the large tree. Now this will be cadmium yellow. Prussian blue, burnt sienna. Start off with a fairly dense mix of cadmium. And where the tree is very dense, start off in that area first. Because as the brush loses paint, you can then paint the more open patches. That's my technique. There we go. Some of these branches are more or less only hanging on the edge of there's another clump there just hanging on it on a bit of branch work on the outside um, so that um, just a little more 
cadmium and you see the benefit of having that um, that underpainting that shines through so immediately we get that lovely feel of a of a summer tree these branches really overhang they actually meet with that but at this moment in time I'm going to use just a little bit of license on that and um, tend not to um, have that happen um, purely because at the moment I don't I, I like that little definition between the two um, and then of course we come very much darker so we just add more blue and more brown and a little cadmium and there's a dark patch there within just before it dries there's a sort of a darker patch there and that breaks out into that area there just have to watch that you don't overdo these dark areas because you can soon get carried away which I have done many many times as you can imagine um, but generally that's um, pretty much there burnt sienna prussian blue cadmium yellow and all of a sudden we begin to get some really dark stuff which is right at the heart of that that tree there got light coming through we mustn't forget to you know we mustn't completely lose that but i love the way these old branches hang down and that's quite a dark area that to start with it does come light again and these would naturally be quite dark um, particularly on the undersides of those branches because that is the side of the tree that's in shadow cadmium yellow burnt sienna prussian blue there you go now this is very dark and I love the way, just put a little bit more dark up there, if only to get rid of a bit of paint from the brush. But there is some lovely dark branches that are overhanging there. A um, bit lighter area there, so I'll put that in shortly. So that is exactly the way I would depict this particular tree then I'm using cadmium again so I just remove a bit of that got quite a bit of paint on the brush so we're gonna to have to come out a little bit further than intended but and we do have quite a lot of branch work in the undersides of that but uh, you know it's just a matter of balance and the picture really balance on the tree and then finally burnt sienna cadmium yellow and Prussian blue but more burnt sienna and Prussian blue than anything else and this goes right into the depth of that tree two little touches there just dab it into that I want to try and hold that depth of color good and while we have that color we may as well I'm just going to soften this now paint in this distance area all you do is just damp that area and just pull it up and then all of a sudden you've got like a, a soft softest edge to that damp uh, that uh, darker area we do quite a lot of dark this side because there's a shadow sweeping from the trees over so um, you know but there is also light we've got to make certain that we have enough light just try and use different technique a little just to ring the changes at that point yeah that's that should marry up quite well mm -hmm. and then of course we've got some dark area this side so um, Prussian blue cadmium yellow fairly dark that would be too dark with this leaving some of those light areas again 
I mean, that's that's the crucial thing. You know, that you don't make it all dark. It's quite dark here in a clump. But then all of a sudden, you know, it, uh, the trunk will then be quite dark. And this is quite dark. We're in the lower area there. Branches hanging out. Tend to blend with the background there, which is fine. Good, good, good. We'll allow that to dry. Okay, well it's still yet to dry off properly, but I'm going to now paint the sunlight on this trunk. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use burnt sienna. Actually, I'm using burnt umber, right? And just to give that very light sort of brown colour. That is the sunlit part of the trunk. Now, then what we do, we take another brush that points a little, and I add burnt umber to, this may seem funny, ultramarine and alizarin. So you get a nice warm feeling of shadow, nice warm shadow coming across that trunk and down that right hand side. And you will see just a little bit touching in there like that. Good. And then you have to go very, very strong to get the nice warm glow down that back edge. Can always add to that later on. Main thing is that you remain, you, know, you keep that nice uh, feel of warmth there. And that goes up and plays up into the branches. And you will see it breaking through in places. So there's a trunk carrying on through there carries on through there then you see the smaller branches coming out of these areas now some will head up and go higher and they do tend to taper a little bit so you've got to watch that when you get up to the top um, they are small enough but they also got to be meaty enough these old uh, trees have got to be meaty enough to support the, um, the trunk itself you know so you know if, if it's a large tree then it's you've got some large branches coming through some lay over the greenery but of course some actually um, Come out, just come out of the of the branch out of the um, clump of greenery um, and um, go up in their merry way to the top of the tree. Really, yep, that looks pretty good to me. Quite a thick trunk there, um, and I've a good mind to connect that up to it so we can see exactly where that goes. Not quite as I saw it, but. That's probably the best you're going to get. And then we've just got a little bit more to put in on this. Um, you know, we're going to have fairly hefty branch coming off there. Um, we're going to have another little branch coming through there. You know, and just put a few in. You know, we can always add. But unfortunately, you won't be able to take them away quite so easily. So it's always important that that you um, just use a little bit of restraint when you come to paint these in. Right, I think we're going to call that a day for that um, large tree. Seems to be working quite well. Now we're going over to the left hand side, just adding more burnt sienna now. We're not putting so much red in, so 
it's going to still it's going to be dark it's going to be ultramarine and burnt um sorry burnt umber but this side is not going to be i don't want it to take the eye too much so that's the main branch that goes through into the green area then you can see it again there add a bit more water to that so so it flows but then the branch comes off of that so it's not a major tree but it's um it's substantial you know in as much as it's got a bit of And that then buries back down into that. It's just a matter of an impression, really, you know. It really is a, you know, an impressionist business, this painting. Well, in, in my book it is. To some people it's um it's a bit more um a bit more clearly defined than that. But to me, um you don't really want to show it has to be a bit suggestive for me um, just you can get away with so much more now we need to allow that to dry right now we've got the um, main trees in a bit of fencing here and uh, gonna use burnt sienna for this for the two gate posts so let's get those in and it's got a little bit of green with that, which is not a major problem. A bit lighter on the left-hand side, where the sun is catching. Quite big posts, which have uh, turned out to be rather large. But there you go. Now I'm adding ultramarine with um, the um, burnt umber. And I'm creating um, the posts one there there's one there a bit more water with that so it flows don't want to be you know I want this to be depicted as quite a quite an old looking fence you know I don't want um, don't really need to have um, have it um, looking brand new and I'm going to put a bit of crimson with that because the back edge of that post is it more in shadow. So if we paint that in like that uh, and um, we've got a nice bit of sunlight onto a less intense um, gate itself. So, you know, a little bit on the, on the greeny side, I suppose. Just to ring the changes throughout. So it's more metal look to that. Not too much more to do. I'm going to use light red now. Just to denote the... We put a bit of cerulean with that to start with. Cerulean blue. Because I need that, that path to be very light. And not too strong in colour until it gets a little nearer then doesn't want to be as strong as that then we all of a sudden bring a bit of red in there and finally my little trick a little olizarin in that track right in the foreground look at that and that really pulls that foreground track forward. Allow that to completely dry. Now we haven't got a great deal at all to do now. Um, a little bit of um, texture to the left hand side, that area there. And to get that texture, I'm actually going to use a flat brush for this. Um, just to bring the changes. As I say, it's nice to have a change of, um, uh, of greenery. Uh, so it's a bit more um, brown in this. So I'm going into where I had the Pr uh, Prussian or Windsor blue and uh, cadmium yellow, but a bit more burnt sienna into there. And then what we have is 
some little touches. I want that to. There we go. See the way I'm scratching across that paper to get that texture. But as that heads down out of picture to the left hand corner, you strengthen that up considerably. So you add a bit more water, a bit more blue, and all of a sudden you get that lovely sort of textured uh, light effect. As if that's a clump of um, green, of greenery or whatever you. Um, we do have some little clumps here. So I'm banging those in. Very damp brush. Um, some grasses. Partly in shadow really. But there's a lot of searing to the grass. Which um, is... Um, Quite important I think to depict here and there like that nice sad area there oh we do have a tree in the background hmm let's put that in burnt sienna see what that happens see what happens to that that's it and then all we do is take the brush paint through and lift off that right hand side just a tad then we get a fan of light catching that lovely warm tree trunk. See that how just about depicted that warm tree trunk in the distance. It's shadow work time. Okay well while that's drying I've just come on to the uh, photograph that I'm working to and um, trying to get a feel of that um, summer day giving it the old water watercolor um, touches to try and in any way in some ways make it better than it actually is in real life if that's possible and uh, this is what I've um, got at the moment um, and uh, got a pigeon just outside the window um, <clears throat> so that's as far as I've got we've got very little to do purely shadow work now and um, that to me is one of the most important areas now for the shadows I'm going to use uh, to start with a brush that points then as I come forward I'll change to a larger brush um, because I want to get a bit of shadow work in the distance <clears throat> now the shadow color I'm going to use I'm going to vary it a little bit. I'm going to use greens, so I'm going to use Prussian blue with a bit of or a touch of creates like a muddy colour really. A touch of olizarin. So that's my shadow colour for the greens. Okay. But where it comes across the path and on any lighter grasses, I'm going to use um, two different uh, reds and um, blues. But anyway, that's the shadow for the overhanging tree work there. Yeah, look at that. And then all I'll do is just take a brush, just a damp brush lightly damped and just bring that up where the sun is coming over the top so that's all worked particularly well and um, we will have another little bit of that there but the light will come through to bring that into sunlight so that's all we need to bring that to uh, trunk area into sunlight there we are so we'll leave that trunk in sunlight now obviously we will have a shadow sweeping across to there and another one sweeping across so we've got two lots of shadow work so the same color is then used just to shadow this side here 
and that just breaks up into an overhanging sort of area there like that make it into just to, so it looks a bit tree like there we go and then that paints back there's some spiky edges so it's all a matter of um, making it look a little bit like um, a sunlit sort of um, feel and I'm just softening a little edge there because I want that just to show there probably is a little bit of shadow there as well there you go so we've got a little bit of sunlight coming through and hitting that uh, greenery good so this is all that we need to do and we've got another little area there little area there some of it just goes into that guy I don't want to cover too much of the light green up so and all of a sudden yeah, it gets a bit more dappled where that big tree is casting shadow across okay Prussian and or lizarin crimson um, we're going to have little pockets of this now here and there trying to get that real feeling of sunlight just picks up that real density okay that's looking good and also that same color is going to use be used with some intensity down the back edge of that tree there and there are some some of those old areas of root that are just coming in and the way we make that I mean, at the moment they just look like straightforward um, bands of color but if you soften the top edge of those all of a sudden they look as if they turn down into that trunk and that's the way you produce that impression of just make bring that right up up to underneath because it's quite dark there well that's the way you bring create an impression of that soften that uh, of a tree with sunlight just catching before it goes around into the shaded area and while I have this color I'm going to just weaken it considerably because I don't want this that area of the trunk in the distance to be as intense as that so I've made that I'm just softening that so that break, brings that into there we are. so that's um, you know that that is in shadow but as I say it doesn't want to be quite as intense and then as we go up through that just make certain we can see where it goes there you go lovely old tree there in the distance not as intense at all um, but it, it's there with sunlight on good that's looking good and the final finish to this will be any um, sort of uh, shadow work sweeping across and uh, what I'm going to use for that <coughs> excuse me um, I'm going to use cerulean blue something that I don't very often use and Indian red so those are two colors that I don't very often use for shadows um, can't really tell you why I'm using them today um, to be quite honest with you but let's see how it goes uh, what a nice warm shadow with this so don't want it too strong um, but it needs to be, have enough depth of colour well, let's add a bit more blue to that brilliant um, good right where's this casting well for a start off it will be cast from that tree there like that and I'm using a damp brush now just to spread it across the path so it's not too intense if you see what I mean it's um it'll give us a 
a sense of that sunlight running through and I've softened it in the foreground but left a hard edge in the background. A lovely little light area there. Good. Now same colour was used for the, the, the dappled light that runs. Now this will show the contour of the ground. So if there's a bit of a bank you will see it actually coming down like that. And of course, with some little dappled pieces there. Then I'm going to sweep it nice and quickly across that foreground. And I'll just lift a little bit of that away. And then we push it up like that. There we are. And then all of a sudden, you get that lovely glow, that lovely feeling of sunlight just lift a little of that away there we are look at how you get that lovely feeling of light now i'm adding more blue now taken away from the um that soft feel and creating um probably a little bit more up into there bring it up into the pulling that down a tad i said just here and there I want to have the definition between the bank and that but using the softness of the brush to just show a bit of indication. There we are. So it varies the um, the colour like that. Brilliant. So as we can see the, the, the variation really. Then here we have um, the fencing. Like that. Don't forget the tapering on the fencing and then the fence posts. Then we get the cross section like that. That's got to have a, a, a tapering effect. Then we have that post there as well. All the solid posts there like that. And then of course we get one, two, three, four, five. And we get these going up like that. We also that's the fence like that. Then we get these fence uprights with two cross sections as it goes out of picture. And all of a sudden, oh, and you would have a hint of that running there. See where that shadow from that would cast around that um, around that trunk always a good thing to do um, and then a little bit more blue to get a somewhat soft just going to pick up a bit of that colour there just so it doesn't get too, too heavy and then a little bit of a soft feel to a shadow it's running across this foreground and what I'm going to do I'm going to damp the paper there and then I'm going to spread this warm colour into that. And it's just going to pass through where that gate is. So as it knocks that, and then it goes up the bank the other side to bring that right way through to there. Yeah, and just soften that there. That's it. Just so as we can still see a bit of that. And then I'm adding a little bit more Prussian now, just to pick up some darker stuff right in this bottom right hand corner, just there, perhaps just along there. And that is pretty much all that is required for that particular painting. Um, I think we can just soften those little areas there. It obviously needs to be allowed to dry thoroughly before we can really see what we've got. Um, oh, and just one thing I really have forgotten to do, which I always like to do, is to just line, um, there will be a bit of shadow from some sort of grasses 
um, that lay there and that will be spread into there and that goes into there that goes into there like that and just a little bit across there there we go and then the other side will actually be we need just to soften that just draw the brush through just to soften that off there we are and then the other side you'll have um, sort of like some quite dark areas where it's a bit of darkness to the to the edge of the little track and there will be some along there too we put those in while it's still damp and all of a sudden you begin to see exactly where the track is and I'm putting some taller pieces there show the contour of the ground and then just blend that in so it's all a matter of uh, and giving an impression of the whole thing really good well I think that pretty much um, sums it up just a great bit of dappled just a bit of dappled line okay let's allow that to dry and I'm going to remove the outer surround so as it pretty much mounts it Well, there's the uh, scene that uh, I was using as reference um, from a walk I had walking around Gallywood some while, um, well, some while, a few, couple of days ago, and um, <clears throat> quite inspired today to to put that down onto watercolour paper. And as you can see, that's the more or less the finished painting. Just needs signing. Um, so what I'm going to do: line the camera up so you can see it more or less as it would be if it was mounted obviously you could have a wider mount and with a frame and everything else but i've taken off that i've taken off that surround uh, that um tape surround and it's just a matter of signing the the, the picture now and i'm just going to use burnt umber to sign that in uh, so taking a little bit of burnt umber with a damp brush and i'm going to sign it down in the bottom right hand corner Um, something that needs to be done as soon after painting as possible that way the paint gets in at the same time um, as you finish the work um, lovely subject um, lovely old tree track leading away into the distance um, nice bit of depth good balance nice fan of light coming through um, the, probably the gateway get, is the most thing that gives you that fern of light and the fence area um, it really is the, the key to giving that uh, a light effect um, I'm just going to extend that a bit more there just a bit of pencil work just to extend that uh, tops of those um, shadows but apart from that, um, all signed up and um, yeah, pretty much happy with that. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, stay tuned to my YouTube channel. Please subscribe if you've yet to do so. Click the bell. Uh, click on the bell and you will get notifications when I upload any new um, videos. Um, most of these pictures, including this one, will be for sale on my website, colinsteedart.com. Um, so um, stay tuned and I shall be back very shortly but in the meantime get those brushes out and have a go at painting that one bye for now